This is a strong draft class. It is absolutely stacked. And May will keep it and to the end zone for Trey May. It's caught. It's Harrison. It's touchdown, Marvin Harrison Jr. Dumb and taken down by Jared Curse. It's broken up by Terry and Arnold. The field and it's intercepted. Arnold. Daniels. That right corner of the end zone. Drops it in. He's taken down behind the line of scrimmage. Dallas Turner chased him down. To the end zone. Neighbors holds it in again. To the 10, to the 5. And Williams takes a shot up the field. That's Washington. We're back. Welcome in everybody to Mock Draft Live. Colleen Wolf here with Bucky Brooks, Daniel Jeremiah. I can't believe we are just under a month away yeah. from the draft. And Bucky, this is your big day. I hope that you're ready. I hope I you're not ready. nervous. Are you prepared for all of the glory and praise that comes with this? Look, this is the best part of what we do. Yeah. Like, it's not about this. scouting. It's not about talking about players. It's about mock drafting because everyone is so concerned about who we think your team is going to take. So I've just decided to take some liberties and go a little off the grid with some of these picks. Oh, I like it. Maybe trusting the intuition a little bit. DJ, are yeah. you ready? I know you have notes. <laughs> um, it's not my mock draft today, Colleen. So <laughs> <let's just laughs> All right, Kermit. Let's back here and relax and enjoy the carnage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, here we go with the first overall pick. No funny business here. The Bears, they get their quarterback of the future and Caleb Williams. Yeah, Caleb Williams goes, look, it, look, everyone expected this to happen. When you move on from Justin Fields, Caleb Williams is the pick. And so now the Bears get a chance to reset and rebuild the franchise with this quarterback from SC. The no-brainer pick, but also all the pressure in the world still comes with that first overall selection. Next up, the Commanders. Bucky sticking with Jaden Daniels going to Dan Quinn's team in Washington. Okay, when you think about Adam Peters wanting to get an experienced quarterback, 55 career stars, Kyler Murray was the QB one of choice for Cliff Kingsbury. Why not take a dual threat playmaker from LSU, a guy who's been a standout collegian with a lot of experience. So that remains unchanged from your previous mock. Let's go here, though. A little shake up from your last ones Drake may no more instead the Patriots stay on brand and draft another Michigan quarterback JJ McCarthy well I mean look if, if you have an opportunity <laughs> to draft the greatest quarterback in Michigan history uh -huh. after you had an opportunity to have Tom Brady for two decades why would you bypass that opportunity JJ McCarthy comes in with a natty under his belt a 27 and one career record a lot of things to like about the quarterback from Michigan I'll stand by whatever decision Elliot Wolf makes because all wolves we stick together <laughs> on things I totally I put all of my trust in him. But let's get into McCarthy a little bit more here because he's been climbing up the charts, up nine spots since your last mock. He basically switched almost places yeah. with Drake May in it. So we'll talk about Drake May in a little bit, but what makes this guy so special? Well, I mean, he can do so many things. I know everyone will look at the numbers and they'll say, well, well why is he the guy? Why are so many people excited about him? Glad we got an XO tape that we can take a look at to talk about. This is what people love about J.J. McCarthy. The velocity and the accuracy you see it come out on time on target he can deliver he is a guy who has fantastic uh, ball placement particularly on intermediate throws but he's more than that he can escape he can create he has the athleticism to make plays on script off script and that athleticism also allows you to do some of the fun things that you like to do in an NFL offense quarterback design runs he can do all of those things and when you think about his pedigree having played under Jim Harbaugh knowing how to play winning football in a variety of different ways I think this guy is well suited to play well in the National Football League kind of reminds me of Alex Smith oh Alex Smith okay well DJ what do you think about this how do you like the fit in, in New England instead of Drake May <laughs> Well, look, for me personally, I like, I like Drake May as the fit better. I think Drake May gets punished a little bit for having taken a step back this year. If we were having this conversation a year ago, people would have said, oh, you're crazy. There's no way. Drake May coming off of a monster season, not only throwing the football, but as a playmaker and, and as a ball carrier, just all the different things he could do. But with J.J. McCarthy, it's all about the trend line. He's gotten better each and every year. He's efficient. He's accurate. He's smart. He's tough. Like all those those intangibles that you want to go along with a 27 and one record. You know, I get it, and I do think the league is higher on JJ McCarthy than maybe what the public perception and the expectation really is. 
Yeah, DJ, when you think about it, like, understand this. This was a highly decorated recruit who elected to go to Michigan, compete for a starting job. He knew that Michigan wasn't going to throw the ball over the yard. It speaks to, I would say, his ego, being able to put that in check to play winning football. When you think about a defensive-minded head coach in Gerard Mayo, hey, you want guys who are about the team, guys who have the toughness. And when you think about what Tom Brady was able to do for that franchise for so long, kind of checking his ego at the door, you now have an opportunity to get a similar mindset in the quarterback, J.J. McCarthy. He wasn't asked to do a ton at Michigan, but when he was, he made the plays that he needed to. He was poised, all of that. Uh, how about this? Let's move to the wide receivers, that portion of the program where Marvin Harrison Jr. <laughs> is the first wide out to go, and he lands in Arizona at four. I mean, look, this is easy. You're the Arizona Cardinals. You had so much success with Larry Fitzgerald. Why not get someone with similar traits? Big time player. When you watch him on tape, you just say, hey, he's a pro. He gets it done in a variety of ways. Easy ball catcher. Does a great job being a number one receiver on any team. I think he's a scheme-friendly fit, which is why he's a perfect fit for the Cardinals. And he reunites with his former college teammate, Paris Johnson Jr., on the offensive line. So, hey, that's nice. I love a reunion. Let's go to six. We're going to skip down to the Giants, where you have New York drafting another wide receiver one from LSU, from Odell to Malik Neighbors. I mean, maybe they try and dig back in the past and bring someone who has some flash to the receiver position, mm -hmm. and that's Malik Neighbors. When you watch him on tape, it is all about the juice. This dude, especially when he has the ball in his hands, you think about trying to help Dan Jones, because remember, the Giants are committed to him. Make the game easy. Allow him to have some short, easy completions that Malik Neighbors can take to the house. He has all the goods when it comes to being number one receiver. Giants haven't had a 1,000-yard receiver since trading Odell away. Neighbors coming off two straight 1,000 thousand yard seasons in college. I get it. I know the pros are different, but that'd be nice for them. Next wide receiver goes to the Bears at nine. Caleb Williams throwing to Roma Dunze, Keenan Allen, and DJ Moore in this scenario. So what I like about this, if you're the Bears, you're trying to build out your wide receiver core with a bunch of interchangeable pieces. This is a high IQ player, great hands, but more importantly, he has that rugged nature that you need to play in Chicago. Now that you look at this rebuilt uh, wide receiver core, when you have Moore, Keenan Allen, and Adunze, you you got tough guys that can do all the dirty work over the middle of the field. This should make the game very easy for Caleb Williams. It's like a mileage multiplier a little bit for that offense, going in and just maximizing what they can do there. Let's fill in the blanks, though, between those wide receivers. Picks four through nine. The Chargers opt for an offensive tackle over a wide receiver at five. Joe Alt is Jim Harbaugh's guy. The Titans also grab a tackle at seven for the continued development of Will Levis. And our first defensive player going eighth to Atlanta, edge rusher Dallas Turner, can step in right away for Raheem Morris. But how the receiver dominoes fall is a massive storyline with this draft. So let's run through them with a little cluster buster here and a few key categories. Um, DJ, I'm going to start with you here. Best route runner in the entire receiver class. Mm -hmm. Well, for me, it's not the big three. I'll go outside of that and say it's Lad McConkey from Georgia mm. because you get a chance when you're studying him, you see all the things that you like. You see the quickness, you see the burst, you see his ability to set up corners and snap off routes. But when I really fell in love with him was when I was studying all the SEC corners because all the elite corners, he torched them, each and every one of them, to the point where I think Lad is spelled with two Ds because it stands for dynamic and dangerous. Nobody Ooh. could cover him in the best conference in college football. He can do a little bit of everything. Man, I need to put some alliteration in my next analysis. Let's hey, see what I can do. this guy like the flex seal of wide receivers <laughs> out there. That's what I told him on Good Morning Football. Let's go best hands, Bucky. Who do you think? Here we go. We're going to stay in the SEC. We're going to go on the other side of the cocktail party, and let's go with Ricky Pearsall from Florida. And what I love about Ricky Pearsall, this guy's the natural. When you watch him play, it is all plucking the ball out of the air. Nice hand-eye coordination, nice concentration and focus. There you see it. I mean, to be able to make that kind of catch in traffic, you have Ooh. to have great hands. This is a playmaker that when you put him in the slot receiver, he is going to give people problems. Ricky Pearsall is the dude really excited about what he brings to a team as a dynamic slot receiver. That one had a catch versus Charlotte. Oh, oh yeah. my goodness. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's what he does. Okay, last one, DJ. Best red zone target out of the entire bunch. Well, this one is going to be my favorite player in the entire draft. He's my number two overall receiver, and that's Roma Dunze from Washington. The, the size, the catch radius, it's elite. And when you get down in the red zone, you can use him in the slot, you can split him out wide. You wanna throw back shoulders, not a problem. You wanna let him use kind of a rocker step and cross you over, he can win that way in those short confined areas. And then when you're in a crowd in that confined space, 
He catches everything. It doesn't matter if there's guys hanging on him, slapping at his arms. He finishes. He's an unbelievable finisher. So Roma Dunze would be my number one red zone target in this draft class. All right, I think we figured it all out. Now we have gone through all the wide receivers and we have all the answers we need. Glad we, we cleared that up now. Uh, let's get back to the mock here. The Jets, they're about to grab Aaron Rodgers, a new weapon for that offense. Let's take a look at who Bucky has them getting. Yeah. Just give me my Bowers with the catch. Trucks a man. Bowers heading to the end zone. And there is Bowers' touchdown. That's Brock Bowers, the reigning Mackey Award winner. He delivers to Brock Bowers. Man, is he devastating after the catch. So instead of going offensive tackle, they want Aaron Rodgers to have a pass catcher. Yeah, when you think about Brock Bowers being able to control the middle of the field, Mike Williams on one side, Garrett Wilson on the other side, Aaron Rodgers being able to really take advantage of the open space in between the hashes, Brock Bowers is one of the best tight end prospects that we've seen in some time. He gets busy over the middle of the field, which is why he is a perfect fit for a team that is in win now mode. Mm, let's talk a little bit more then about Bowers here because he's been getting a ton of hype the past two years, Bucky. Is it warranted? Is he actually a unicorn? You know the Jets, they could Ooh. definitely use more hype. They never have hype. I mean, who, let's look who, back at last season. I mean, I mean, who doesn't like unicorns? Who doesn't like special players I that are just them. mystical and magical? When, when you look at the tape for Brock Bowers, he certainly brings that to the table. It's just how natural he is catching the ball over the middle of the field. He can plug, he can go. He has outstanding running skills for a big body playmaker. Here we see it. It's the yak. Yards after catch. I would say yards after contact. He runs through arm tackles on the perimeter, which is why it's really problematic to find the right defender to go with him. And then it's just the, the route running ability to go with the hands. He expands the strike zone for the quarterback. You now have an opportunity to put Brock Bowers in the middle of an offense that features dynamic playmakers on the outside. Aaron Rodgers can't go wrong. If he's healthy and available, this offense would be next level with Brock Bowers in the middle. DJ. Yeah, I was, uh, I was uh, making a phone call before last year's draft. Remember they had Darnell Washington, the tight end oh, from yeah. Georgia that went to the Pittsburgh Steelers. He was 6'7", 260 plus pounds. So I'm talking to a coach and I go, hey, tell me about your freak tight end, thinking about Washington. He goes, he's the best player on our team. It, nobody can stop him. We can play him at running back. And I go, oh, Wait a second, I'm talking about Washington. Oh, I thought you were talking about the other, the other freak tight end. I thought you were talking about this guy here and Brock Bowers. <laughs> They've been saying he's the best player on their football team for several years now. And you, I was at that national championship game against TCU. I thought he jumped off the field, and that was, uh, was pretty obvious. He's George Kittle to me as, a, as size, speed, toughness, physicality, ball in his hands, run after catch. This is a special player. How do you like that fit with the Jets? I like it. I, to me, you get a uh, you get a middle of the field chain mover for Aaron Rodgers. He compliments Garrett Wilson. Think about putting those guys on the same side. You flex Bowers out in the slot. He can win a lot of those option routes inside. And then if you want to dedicate attention to him, Garrett Wilson can carve you up on the outside. So I think they would play quite well off one another. And the thing about Bowers, even though we see a lot of the highlights where he's been utilized as a flex tight end, he to me has what we call Y capabilities. He is an inline blocker. He can block, he can catch, he can run routes, he can do it from an attached position or out wide. Hard to find tight ends that have that kind of versatility, but he is a unicorn as we talked about at the beginning of the segment. And that first player to ever win back-to-back -back Mackey Awards, maybe he can bring that awards luck to the Jets. I yeah. feel like they could probably use a little <laughs> bit of that. Uh, believe it or not, we'll find out where Bowers goes and the rest of the prospects coming up in just about a month here. The Real Deal 2024 NFL Draft is live in primetime from Detroit. Thursday, April 25th at 8 p.m. Eastern. You can catch the entire show right here on NFL Network. So coming up next, though, on Mock Draft Live, 10 picks down, and Drake May is still on ice. Buck, a UNC guy yourself? I love the uniforms. I love Drake May. I mean, I do love the uniforms, too. Find out where Bucky thinks he lands. Here's a hint. He won't be waiting long. And 
just like that, there he goes. Drake May falls right into the hands of the Vikings at 11. Yeah, he goes right to where, look, he should go to. And in my mind, because we don't do trades, I can't have the Minnesota Vikings jumping into the top 10 to get Drake May. But what I can talk about is how this would be the perfect fit for Drake May. Kevin O'Connell, Josh McCown, being able to take a young, promising prospect with big time arm talent and athleticism. I can't think of a better place for Drake May to land than the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah, and Josh McCown, coached him when he was in high school, so a little reunion as well. The Vikings, they don't need to trade up. They don't need to waste assets because they can just stay at 11 and hopefully a quarterback falls to them. In this scenario, uh, you do have Drake May, but May falls right to Kevin O'Connell. Feels like the absolute perfect scenario for him. And honestly, like watching the tape, what do you think he does well? Everything. He all has the, the potential things. to do all of the things. The, the problem that you have with Drake May, if we're grading off the production, the production wasn't what you thought it would be. But when you look at the tape, I mean, look, this guy is special. Big time arm talent. He's the prototype at the position. He's big, he's fast, he's physical. He can make all the throws that you want to see. He has the ability to throw with touch timing. He can make accurate throws. He can do it under pressure or not. But watch him fit this one in. Ooh. Right over top of the shoulder, dropping it down the chute. He has the athleticism that you want. You're here, people make the loose comparisons to Josh Allen because when you look at the tape, you can see him do some of those Josh Allen like stuff. And if you don't like throwing right handed every now and then, you got to be able to throw it left handed. Drake May can do that. The athleticism, the mobility, the arm talent would lead you to believe that this dude has the potential to be a number one overall pick. But the inconsistencies from his last year dings him a lot. That's why right now in this situation, he's QB4 on the board, but he's the right quarterback for the Minnesota Vikings. Mm. Yeah, a couple things here. First of all, we talk about prototypes because, Buck, we use that word all the time. What does that look like? 6043, so over six foot four, 223 pounds. You look at what he did the year before. When you pull up the numbers, threw for over 4,300 yards, 38 touchdowns, seven picks. He rushed for almost 700 yards and another seven touchdowns. So you're talking about the prototypical size, the prototypical athlete, had all that production. If we were coming off of 2022, we wouldn't even be having this discussion, but he took a step back this year because the supporting cast wasn't as good. And Buck, the names we've talked about that had the same situation, Josh Allen and Jordan Love, two guys who saw their supporting cast deteriorate, their numbers went down their final year, and as it looks right now, both, both turned out quite fine. So DJ, when you look at the scenario that the Vikings have, it seems like it is kind of perfect. You have Justin Jefferson there, you have Jordan Addison, mm -hmm. now you have Aaron Jones, you have familiarity with the coaching staff in Josh McCown. Do you agree that this is probably the best case for a young rookie quarterback? I would be getting on my knees and praying every day if I was Drake May that whether or not that means the Minnesota Vikings trading up to three, four, five, whatever, or in this best case scenario for the Vikings that Bucky has here, because Bucky doesn't do trades and mock drafts, that he just falls right into their laps. I want to play for the Minnesota Vikings if I'm Drake May. That is my number one choice. And quite honestly, I don't care if that's pick two, three, five, eleven, wherever. I want to go play with that group and for that coach. Oh, look, using what DJ and I have talked about for years, talk about three Ps. Talk about play caller, mm -hmm. Kevin O'Connell's outstanding. Talk about playmakers, Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, Aaron Jones, they're there. Protection, they have a solid offensive line where he doesn't have to worry about being hit on every play. What young quarterback wouldn't flourish in that environment? And then the fact that you have two former quarterbacks that are playing the National Football League, being able to whisper those sweet nothings in his ear. This is the play that Drake, place that Drake May should want to go to because everything around him will allow him to be successful. The stars, they actually would align in this scenario. And I'm sure the Vikings <laughs> will be all over Drake May's Pro Day. We will be as well here on NFL Network, NFL Plus. It's a huge, huge day coming your way. Uh, UNC's Thursday, March 28th, that's their Pro Day. And then Jaden Daniel and LSU also this week on Wednesday, March 27th. You can catch those on NFL Plus for exclusive live coverage. All right, Bucky's next pick spent his pro day in slides. Uh, Jared Verse didn't participate in Florida State's pro day, but he lands in Denver with the 12th pick. So you're the Denver Broncos, and you have to make a decision whether you want a, a, a quarterback or a pass rusher. Jared Verse is the perfect pass rusher. When I watch him, explosive, makes a ton of plays, just coming off first step quickness, get off and finish, violent hands. This is a big time player who has double digit sack production potential. And Vance Joseph, he gets a premier pass rusher to get after all of those AFC quarterbacks. 
Let's go here. The Raiders up next at 13, and you get them some protection for whoever's playing quarterback for them. Yeah, Talisha Buanga is the perfect fit for them. They want to be physical. Uh, Antonio Pierce has talked about up front. They want to be bullies. No matter who is at running back, they want to run the football. This guy moves the furniture in the living room. Love him at the point of attack. He is exactly what the Raiders need to take the next step in their growth as a playoff team. And Fuanga mentioned that a lot of his family members are Raiders fans already, so I think that they would be really happy with this pick, Bucky. Oh, absolutely. Let's go. Be. Just like that, another tackle. Gone at 14. The Saints, they go J.C. Latham from Bama. Yeah, so look, Derek Carr is going to be the quarterback. You want to make sure that you put a fortress in front of him. J.C. Latham is a guy that dominates people at the point of attack. They have some issues on both of the edges. Ryan Ramsick, Trevor Penning, who is going to be able to be the guy? Well, now take J.C. Lanham and then let them compete for the best five players at the front line on the field to make sure that Derek Carr can get it done. They have a ton of needs, and that Ryan Ramchek injury is certainly forcing their hand here, I think, a little bit. Uh, at 15, our first corner off the board, the Colts take Quinyon Mitchell from Toledo, Buck. If you want a blueprint for how to be a big-time first-round pick, just follow what Quinyon Mitchell has done. Look, he aced the test during the regular season, dominated at the Senior Bowl on the All-Star Circuit, lit it up at the Combine. He does everything, and when you think about Chris Ballard and what he's done, he has always taken the prototypes, the athletic freaks in the draft. He's all over them. Well, this is another freak-type player that you can put on the perimeter. Quenya Mitchell should be the pick for the Colts. Well, we've waited long enough. Time for Instant Impact, presented by Microsoft Surface. Okay, DJ, how does this fit with the Colts, Kenyon Mitchell, aside from filling the most glaring need that they have right now? Well, Colleen, we always talk about building your team to win your division. And I don't know that we foresaw this, but already one year into his career, CJ Stroud has planted his flag in this division. And you better build your team to be able to defend him and his assortment of weapons. When you go out and get a guy like Quinion Mitchell, he has the speed to match up with Tank Dell, which is elite, elite speed, low 4-3 speed. But he also has that physicality that's needed to go up against somebody like a Nico Collins. So not only does he fit Chris Ballard and what he looks for in the position, I think he matches up quite well with the team you're going to have to deal with year in and year out with C.J. Stroud at the helm there with the Texans. Mm -hmm. And Buck, Mitchell was the third corner in your last mock, and now he's the top guy. What happened? Well, look, we talked about the process, talked about the blueprint that he's put out there. When you watch him dominate in the senior bowl, and then you come back and you see his workout at the combine, you see that this guy checks off all the boxes that an elite cornerback should check off. Uh, maybe you don't. We maybe you have some hesitation about him playing in the MAC, but after watching the way that he has continued to progress from the regular season to the postseason through the combine, it's hard to say that there's a better cornerback in the draft than Quinn Mitchell. Colts are just collecting athletes after drafting Anthony Richardson last year. They missed out on Legarius Sneed, so that fills a glaring need for them in Indy. All right, coming up, we're talking top edge rushers in this year's class. Is there a 2024 Will Anderson out there? That and the rest of Bucky's surprises when we come back. Dallas Turner with the takedown. They get to him, and it's Dallas Turner. One of the premier pass rushers in college football. Taken down by Jared Verse. He is set, and that is Jared Verse. And he's hit, and he's dropped. And it's Latu stepping up and going down. Leatu Latu. So many pro days, so little time. But that's okay because we're looking out for you with the first ever Big 12 Pro Day special this Thursday. It's quarterbacks, wide receivers, and tight ends. Friday, running backs and DBs. The Big 12 Pro Day presented by Air Force Reserve. Both nights, 8 p.m. Eastern, exclusively on NFL Network and streaming on NFL+. Plus. So a guy who played in the Big 12 last year, Texas defensive tackle Byron Murphy the second, and Bucky, you're sending him to the Rams with a 19th pick. Big <laughs> shoes for him to fill in LA. Yeah, big shoes for him to fill, but he doesn't have to do a ball by himself. But I'm just thinking about putting together a young athletic line, Byron Murphy being able to dominate on the inside, the up, the quickness, the energy, the relentlessness. He brings all those tools and traits to the table. This is a good Rams defense. Look, you can't replace Aaron Donald, but you certainly can get someone who kind of has that that, that mindset mm -hmm. that I'm going to dominate down in, down out. All right, so if you're wondering who went before the Rams pick, 
At 16, the Seahawks take a blocker whose former college coach is now the Seahawks offensive coordinator, Ryan Grubb. So he stays close to home, going from Washington to Seattle in the same state. Uh, the Jags replace cornerback Darius Williams, who went back to the Rams with Alabama's Terrion Arnold. And the Bengals take Brian Thomas Jr., another LSU wide receiver, joining Jamar Chase in Cincinnati. But for those Rams fans excited about Byron Murphy, Lance Zerline has more for you to chew on. Here's what he had to say about the defensive tackle on DJ's draft show on NFL+. Plus. Watch him corkscrew down, play the double team. That's great technique. Once again, corkscrews that left leg, plays the double team, bends, leans into it, plays off of it, and then ranges to make a tackle. There are not many players, DJ, in football, and I mean NFL football as well, who have the ability to do what he just did there on that play. Now, he's going to be playing against much better competition. Well, you think of guys like Ed Oliver, you think of Aaron Donald. I hate even invoking the name of Aaron Donald because I feel like it's never fair to any prospect. But those are some of the things that, for example, Aaron Donald does. Rare strength and leverage at the point of attack and then unbelievable short area quickness and explosive athleticism. Byron Murphy has many of those traits, and he's a three-down defensive tackle, which is really something that you covet in the NFL. You know, my parents taught me to never compare myself to others, <laughs> only compare NFL prospects to pros. So yeah. this segment is Thank for you. Ed and Good Ann. Good job. We're going to go yeah. with the edge rushers here. And uh, Bucky, let's start with Alabama's edge, Dallas Turner. Who's his comp? So let's go with Brian Burns from the New York Giants. And when you look at Brian Burns, Brian Burns is a guy who has a lot of energy, good speed rusher of the field. But Dallas Turner shows all of those things on tape. This guy gets after it. He can win with speed. He can win with power, finesse. But really, he wants to run past you. He wants to utilize a variety of finesse moves to get it done. Much like Brian Burns has been able to dominate for most of his career. First in Carolina, and then we'll see the next phase in New York. And really blossomed into a star once Will Anderson Jr. left. So good on him. Let's go here. Buck has Florida State's Jared Verse going to the Broncos at 12, which we already outlined. This dude is absolutely a wrecking ball. DJ, who's his pro comp? Yeah, to me, if you look at just the, the size similarities and the play style, play style similarities, Will Anderson from last year, who we know what he did as the third overall pick to the Houston Texans was dominant because they're rugged players. They play with kind of a violent play style. They're not going to finesse you on the edges. They want to run right through your chest and take you right back to the quarterback. Uh, that's exactly what Jared Verse does. And by the way, don't get it twisted, uh, Colleen, because I, Ed's told me he compared you to Michelle Kwan, you know, numerous times. <laughs> so let's let's back off this. I don't compare my kids. You have no idea, DJ. She was my favorite. I loved Michelle Kwan. I felt like she got robbed when Tara Lipinski won that year. Don't even get me started. Okay, <laughs> let's continue with the pro comps here. Bucky Layatsu Latsu from UCLA. We're still waiting to see where he lands in your mock, but who's his pro comp? So when I look at uh, Latsu, I just love the first step quickness and burst. Reminds me a lot of Von Miller when Von Miller was coming out of Texas A&M. And I know that's a lofty comparison because we're talking about a gold jacket player, but I don't know if there's a better natural rusher than Latsu in this draft class. This guy can do it with first step quickness. He can do it with power. He can do it from inside and outside. When you think about the great pass rushers, man, Man, that fastball is one that goes by batters and his first step quickness. When he speed rushes, he blows fast blockers. That's why he's going to be a dominant rush at the next level. And talk about facing adversity. Everything that happened with his neck injury and wasn't sure if he would play again. I mean, this guy has a story. He has seen some things and he's been to the brink and back. So that's only going to serve him in the NFL. Now, those edge rushers that we just talked about might be in the face of Bucky's next few picks. At 20, the Steelers add some love in the trenches taking Georgia's Amarius Mims. Mm, Amarius Mims teaming up with Roger Jones. As the Pittsburgh Steelers are kind of remaking themselves into that rugged, bully-type team, they now can do it with a big, massive edge blocker that can really dominate at the point of attack. As Arthur Smith wants to implement a physical running game and a nice complimentary play-action pass game, you can do that with a big body in Amarius Mims on the edge. Yeah, and the Steelers double down on offensive tackles in the first round, back-to-back -back years. Roger Jones, 14th overall last year, and now this, if they do go in that direction. At 21, another offensive lineman goes. Oregon's Jackson Powers Johnson is headed to Miami. Yeah, we're going to send him to Miami because they got to fix this offensive line. They got to make sure that Tua Tagovailoa is protected. And we think about having a smaller quarterback. You got to make sure that the middle is really stout and steady. Uh, JPJ is a guy that gets it done. He stonewalls guys at the point of attack, which is why I like the fit for him 
down in Miami. Yeah, protecting Tua and keeping that run game for Mike McDaniels, that is the priority for the Dolphins. The Cowboys continue the run on offensive linemen at 24. Buck has Dallas drafting Duke center Graham Barton. Look, it's hard for me because this guy went to Duke. But I know. He is an outstanding player. He has five position versatility. He can play anywhere on the line of scrimmage. You think about the Cowboys and what they're trying to do. They're trying to fix their offensive line. Uh, now you have someone that can plug and play in a variety of spots, but he should be a pivot at the next level. And the Cowboys, they are so good at drafting offensive linemen in that first round. They have struck gold. Bucky's full list of picks 20 to 24, the three offensive linemen that we just ran through, plus two DBs. Philly gets the Kool-Aid man and the Vikings draft Cooper DeGene out of Iowa. Still to come on Mock Draft Live, the Packers are on the clock. Which way does Bucky have his former team go, though? Plus, who are the Niners and the Chiefs targeting at the back of the uh, back half of the first round? We're going to find out next. Buck, I need to know. Oh, I got you. All right, good. Back here on Mock Draft Live, and for the first time, we're hearing Peyton Wilson's name on the show. Buck, you have the NC State linebacker heading to Green Bay. Oh, and I know it's controversial to take an off-ball linebacker in the first round, but yeah. man, I can't find a better linebacker than Peyton Wilson. This guy can do it in a variety of ways. Hit, run, and tackle, can pass rush, can knock the ball loose on forced fumbles, can pick him up and score, also catches the ball on interception. This guy does it all. He is a perfect fit for the Green Bay Packers because he's an outstanding athlete and a terrific football player. So the Packers continuing to do to Jordan Love what they did to Aaron Rodgers and not draft offensive skill position players. But that's okay. I mean, they hey, listen. 50 wide receivers that are either second What year more or do you want? Uh, I'm with you. All right, here. I have more questions, though, about Wilson because, DJ, you didn't have a linebacker go in your latest mock. It's not the deepest position in this year's draft. Is it a reach, yeah. though? Look, he's my 40th player, and Bucky and I have talked about this on the Move Sticks podcast several times, which was if you eliminated age and injury and you just watch the tape of Peyton Wilson, I think he would be a first-round pick. I don't know there would be a lot of debate about it because the speed which you saw at the combine is legitimate. It shows up on the tape. He's got instincts. He's got a ton of production, both against the run and the pass. It's all there. Then you had the wrestling background, the leadership, all that stuff. But you can't ignore the injuries, and you wish he was a little bit younger. So that's why, to me, he's on the fence of a borderline one uh, early second round pick. I think that's not crazy to see him sneaking into one. So when I look at Peyton Wilson, he reminds me a lot of a guy that we've had on the Move to Six podcast, Luke mm -hmm. Keekley. And I know people don't like to make those lofty comparisons, but this guy can literally do it all. The instincts, the toughness, the nastiness, he brings a lot to the table as a defensive player. If you're the Green Bay Packers who've already loaded up a defense with first round talent, this is a guy that you put in the middle. This defense will be good for a long time with Peyton Wilson in the middle. And with Devondre Campbell gone, they need someone uh, to replace him and someone to bring in for the future. So let's move to the Bucks at 26, where this is crazy. Guys, Todd Bowles is adding someone to get after the quarterback. I don't believe it. Oh, no. Look, Todd Bowles <laughs> loves to blitz more than anybody else in the National Football League. So now you bring in Layatu Latu that can come off the edge. We already talked about comparisons coming off the edge like Von Miller in terms of his first step quickness and burst. You now put him down where he can go hunt the quarterback. Their offense is going to score points. So now it's about trying to find a way to stymie people chasing points. Latu is a guy that certainly helps Todd Bowles erase some of the production that offenses can put up. Mm -hmm, especially with Shaq Barrett gone as well. Uh, and another edge rusher goes at 27 when the Cardinals snag Mizzou's Darius Robinson. Yeah, Darius Robinson, someone on tape that reminds me a lot of Cam Jordan when Cam Jordan was coming out of Cal. This is a guy that's played inside, he can play outside, just kind of a blue collar edge worker. And if I'm the Arizona Cardinals and I'm Monty Austin Ford trying to figure out how to change the coach in the locker room, man, bring those blue collar guys with the right mentality. He certainly has the right mentality and the game to help them get it done. This is nice in your mock. They grab a wide receiver early and then they go to this side of the ball, so they now are building on both sides in this first round for the future. We move to the Bills at 28. The Bills desperately need to restock that defense, and they do it with Illinois big man Johnny Newton. Yeah, Johnny Newton coming over. You think about trying to build your team inside out, and so you have Ed Oliver who can 
operate from inside, but now you put Johnny Newman beside him. You have Daquan Jones, but how long, much longer can Daquan Jones be there? He's 32 years old. Get a young player that can jump in the rotation. Newton is a guy that is all ball all the time. Love the motor energy that he displays on tape. Mm -hmm. That extra help to contain Mahomes and Burrow come playoff time. I know it's March and I'm talking about playoffs next year, but this is what we do, guys. We uh, plan for the future. <laughs> at 29, once a lion, always a lion. Detroit gets Aiden Hutchinson, a running mate here. Penn Stater, Chop Rob. Robinson. Yeah, Chad Robinson is one that, look, you can't look at the production, you got to look at the projection. When you watch the tape, you see a guy that has great first step quickness, great closing burst and energy, relentless player. I like pairing them opposite Aiden Hudson because Aiden Hudson is going to be your number one pass rusher. All the attention can go there. So give me the best athlete on the backside. Let him win some of those one-on-ones. I'm not going to say let's chop it up here, but I'm not yeah, going to not it say it. <laughs> DJ, what's his ceiling and how does he fit with the Lions? Well, I think he's someone who's going to end up being more of a disruptor than maybe just a pure high-end production. But if you think about him going to Detroit, uh, you've got Aiden Hutchinson, who's a finisher. On the other side with Chop Robinson, he's going to create the chaos. He's going to have a lot of assists. So the sacks, you know, the total might not be quite as high, but he's so dynamic, so explosive that he creates opportunities for his teammates. So I think he's someone you appreciate more when you watch him than if you just look at the numbers on a piece of paper. And by the way, are we going to ignore the elephant in the room here? The Bucky's just going with clumps of players. Like he just picks up a scoop of offensive linemen and throws them all in a row. <laughs> then he grabs a scoop of defensive linemen and throws them out there all in a row. I mean, this is a, this is a pattern that starting to develop here in this mock draft. I'm a compartmental eater. And so that, that's kind of how I, I do things. Wait, so look, we eat all the meat, then we eat Separate all the veggies, we eat all together. Yeah. We don't mix them together. Are so you serious? That's what we're doing. That is what yeah. we're doing. Yeah, like that's what we do. Like compartmental eating. Just so like, like we do the mock drafts. If, there, yeah. if two things the, are touching on your plate. He has a dish that's like the no, whole look, tray. Look, 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 we like to make yeah, sure. Yeah, it has yeah, a little like, potato it, spot. It, it, look, it all started here. as yeah. a kid. The TV the dinners. The TV dinners got me when you have all the little things separated. <laughs> yes. Just made it easy when you're a kid. So I just yes. follow. If it's not broke, don't mm -mm. fix you, Now, you got to put everything yeah. in the bowl. Oh, mix no, no, it all together. No, we don't mix it all together. Keep it separated. Wow. I mean, I'm learning. this mock. <laughs> I'm learning so much. Uh, don't even know where we are at this point, but uh, that's that's incredible. Uh, fun fact: we have worked together for ten years, and I did not know that about you. Oh my goodness. Okay, so Chop lands with Detroit in Detroit if he does attend the draft. And the final three picks of Bucky's first round: the Ravens go offensive tackle and Tyler Guyton. The Niners draft a speedy corner and Nate Wiggins, and then the Chiefs close out the night with a corner to replace Legarius Sneed. When we return, though, someone Bucky left off the list. Where aware is the rocket-armed quarterback from Washington? We're talking Michael Penix Jr. and oh, the places he could go. So like, not at all. No, no. Look, food I, I put the touch. corners. I put the corners together there. That was like dessert. That was kind of wow. like a little apple you, cobbler at you, the corner of a TV dinner. We, I need to take you out. We're gonna go out to dinner. We're gonna figure this out. <laughs> Get it together, everybody. The 2024 NFL Draft is quickly approaching. Detroit will host the party, kicking off Thursday, April 25th, 8 p.m. Eastern. Where will the quarterbacks fall? Who's trading places? The run on receivers? When does that start? When does it end? It's all a mystery until it isn't. You can watch the entire thing right here on NFL Network. UNC quarterback Drake May, a big part of the draft. Uh, might as well get to know him now. In my style of plays, you know, I try to do it all. Play inside the pocket, make plays outside the pocket, you know, take over a game. To the end zone for Drake May. Throws it down near the goal line, touchdown! And we need something to happen, I, I like the ball in my hands. Gonna keep it going left. And oh my goodness, he threw it to the end zone and it's caught! Drake May, quarterback, University of North Carolina. I'm from a small town right outside Shaw, North Carolina, called Huntersville. So we got the same house there. My dad was a three-sport athlete in high school, went on to play quarterback in North Carolina. Him and my mom are with me with every decision I make. Drake surely got some toughness being little brother. And gonna throw it deep here, and another beautiful toss. Being the youngest of four boys, you know, I was the run of the family for a little bit, and I'm still you know, the shortest of them all, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, you know, the biggest thing for me is you know, having three of my best friends in life as my brothers, and uh, you can't really ask for something better than that. My dad was a graduate assistant for Coach Brown back in his first stint at North Carolina. The hype train of Mac is back, it's real, and uh, I started with Sam Howell. Touchdown, Tar Heels, Sam Howell. 
and I'll just try to take over, kind of make some noise in the football world. May takes off and has room at the 10, at the 5, Drake May a touchdown. Sam's your one best friend. We still, you know, work out in the offseason, throw together, you know, play golf in, in, you know, in the offseason, and I think he's been a great mentor to me in my freshman year in North Carolina. Why should NFL team draft me? You know, I think the biggest thing is, you know, my work ethic. I'm in there, ready to do whatever the team needs. Compare myself to somebody in the game right now. I think Josh Allen, I think the way he competes, the way he, you know, runs around out there and making big time throws. And he got a little more swag than I do, but uh, at the same time, he's just about ball. Break the keep it and score! How about that? You know, hearing your name called on draft night is something you always, you know, dream about. And, you know, being at the draft and, you know, being there with my close ones, my loved ones. So, you know, really a dream come true and the dream doesn't stop there. Drake May, the fourth and final quarterback drafted in Muc Bucky's latest mock. It was Caleb to the Bears, Jaden to the Commanders, JJ to the Patriots, and then Drake to the Vikings, which leaves Michael Penix Jr. waiting for day two. DJ has him off the board at 13 to the Raiders. So, Bucky, why hasn't Penix stolen your heart yet? Look, I love Michael Penix, and I thought, like, going into the process that he would be one of the top quarterbacks. But the one thing that you're worried about is the injury history, four season-ending injuries during his time at Indiana. And even though he played terrific at Washington, that's going to be a conversation that you have to have with the doctors and those things before you can make that move. So in this version of the mock draft, I'm going to say that everyone couldn't get comfortable with that. But the game on tape, the game is outstanding. He is one of the best deep ball throwers that we've seen in some time. He makes it happen. He's very aggressive when it comes to that. And so when DJ links him to the Raiders, if the late Al Davis is there, it's a perfect fit. There's a place for him, just not confident that it's going to be in the first round. Okay, that's fine. DJ, give me the elevator pitch here. What do you what do you love about him? What's to like? I'm sure you have some tape. I want to see the receipts. <laughs> yeah, forget my words. Let's uh, let's look at what he did. When you look at the video, that's the best selling point. And really, truthfully, when you watch the game against Texas, that's where you're going to see everything you want to see. You think about the over the top accuracy, those deep balls, outstanding. This was a question mark during much of his tape was, well, can he create? You know, is he gonna be able to move around within the pocket and deliver the ball accurately? You see the example there. The touch over the top, I mentioned on a deep post, you'll see it on those bucket throws on the outside as well. And then to really just power the football. You'll see seam routes on both sides in this game from the left side and the right side where he can absolutely power the ball into tight windows. He's got enormous hands and the ball jumps out of his hands. So in terms of as a thrower, I can put a tape together and make the case he's the best thrower in the entire draft. But you have to factor in the injuries. You have to factor in a little bit of inconsistency throughout his college career. Uh, and that's why I think he's a borderline player. I like the fit with the Raiders. That's why I put him there at 13. But that might be more of a trade back scenario. Okay, so I'm going to do something that you shouldn't do on TV. I'm going to say like it. the hot take to the very end. But DJ, I'm going to say this. Like I think Michael Penix is the guy in this draft class that could be the C.J. Stroud. When you just think about how he played and how he thrived at Washington, everyone talked about C.J. Stroud not being able to create. He can't do this. But when you look at the tape, C.J. Stroud did a lot of the things that Michael Penix did, throwing with timing, touch, anticipation. Michael Penix does all of that stuff. It's can we get comfortable with the durability issues? Because when it comes to throwing, this guy throws it like no other. Okay, what about the fact that He's a left-handed quarterback. For some reason, I'm getting the vibe that that is uh, somehow a strike against nah, players No, I mean, this now. just changes. If we were playing Madden, we just got to flip everything to go to the left. But it doesn't really change it. It's just, as a play call, you just got to change your mind to make the passing concept that you like. Sometimes you have to go strong left as opposed to strong right. That's not a major issue. Okay, all right. Well, Bucky, you did it. Today, yeah. you did it. Right. We uh, will be accepting all sorts of comments <laughs> from Twitter, uh, whether you love it, whether you hate it. Bucky's DMs are open, I'm sure. Wide open. Wide <laughs> open. Don't get blocked, though. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't get blocked. Don't get blocked. Next week, it's Lance Zerline <laughs> coming through with his mock draft. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll be back. Have a great week and enjoy all the pro days.